I'm, I'm George Martin. I'm a former co-chair of the Greater Milwaukee Party, former co-chair of the Wisconsin Green Party, uh, a leader in the National Party, and on Dr. Jill Stein's shadow cabinet, I am the ambassador of peace. We here in Milwaukee got this together because we heard on Tuesday from friends, friends, friends at the First Unitarian, that, that they were aware in working on this with, with relationships out east uh, as individuals. And then we pursued our own party to see where it was. And we got the go on Wednesday. The deliberations and the work with the attorneys and the forensics experts had been mounting during the week and the, the go ahead was given on Wednesday of this week. So this has been a real rush in terms of what we've had to do. Since Wednesday, we have raised over $4 million. Since Wednesday, we are the party of democratic integrity. Not only around this issue in terms of voter integrity, but for us to raise that money is significant because we do not take money from corporations or from political PACs. This comes from the American public. We work against big money in politics and the influence of that money. And that's why we take that ethical position. You know, it's, it's, some people might see it surprising that, you know, the Green Party has jumped up when this has been in the makes for the last 10 days around the country with lawyers who specialize in recount, with forensics experts, with computer experts, not only coming to us, but coming to the Democratic Party to say this needs to be recounted. There's enough evidence here that it should be investigated. I want to be clear. There is no smoking gun. There is not something that we're pointing to say that this is wrong in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. What we are saying is that there's enough peripheral evidence to warrant that our system should be investigated. We are not doing this to the benefit of one candidate over the other. We're doing this for the benefit of the American public so that we can trust that our votes are counted. Today, I'm going to give you further information in terms of where we are with the filing later on. But I would like to start with welcoming uh, Reverend Jennifer Nordstrom, the, the First Minister of the First Unitarian Church here in Milwaukee, and someone who I've worked with in terms of disarmament nationally, internationally for a long time. Uh, Jennifer is new to our community. Let's welcome Reverend Nordstrom. I'm Reverend Jennifer Nordstrom. I'm the senior minister of the First Unitarian Society of Milwaukee. I'm not a member of the Green Party, and I'm speaking in my personal capacity. As a Unitarian Universalist minister, I'm deeply committed to democracy. It's one of our core Unitarian principles. Because of that, I want to affirm that I'm here in support of fair elections, and part of fair elections is counting every vote to make sure every vote counts. Computers make mistakes. We all know that. And computer security experts around the country have said that these machines are vulnerable to hacking. No human eyes have looked at these ballots yet. So part of what we want to do is have human beings look at the ballots and make sure, especially here in Wisconsin where we're dealing with the effects of redistricting and voter ID laws, it's particularly important to make sure that every ballot that was actually cast is counted accurately. For us as Unitarian Universalists, it's so important to have security and integrity in our electoral process. And this recount effort is part of making sure of that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Reverend David Kramer. I'm the minister at United Unitarian Universalist in Waukesha. 
And I would like to underscore the message of integrity that George and Jennifer just outlined for you. As Unitarian Universalists, we covenant together to promote the use of the, of the democratic process within our churches and within society at large. We have a chance now to ensure that the integrity of our voting system is assured. There's been a, a question of integrity in our system by many Americans for many years. The fact that our system may be compromised now is cause for us to take a look at what votes were, count, were cast and what votes were counted. It's a matter of integrity for us and it's a matter of integrity, I think, for all Americans. Thank you. But before I introduce our next speaker, as we talk about the Green Party being the party of, of democratic integrity, this raising the issue of the votes is not new to us. In 2000, the horrible situation in Florida, if we remember back, we Greens stood with black students who were disenfranchised and not allowed to vote and took over the Florida Capitol. That was in 2000. In 2000, with the debacle in Ohio, and I worked Ohio in 2000 on a nonpartisan basis, after that election, our presidential slate, David Cobb and Pat LaMarche, initiated voter protection programs in Ohio and investigation of the count. And now again here, in 2016, our candidates, Dr. Jill Stein, Ajamu Baraka, have initiated this. So as we go forward, you know, we came in and people point where you came in fourth in the state of Wisconsin. There are a lot of reasons for that. But at the same time, we have an obligation to the citizens of Wisconsin and America to begin that process to take a good, hard, look at our system. There are conversations about hacking in other countries. We know that that's happened not only with the emails of top officials, but in, in, in the Democratic Party itself. We're not saying that happened, but we're saying we gotta take a look to make sure it didn't happen and that it can't happen in the future. I'd like to introduce you to uh, Brian Verdeen, the Martin Luther Je King Justice Coalition, and the Green Party candidate for Congress in 2002. Brian. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, like many of us uh, in the United States, I think we were somewhat shocked uh, by the results of the election uh, this past uh, November 8th. I think I was even more amazed at uh, Wisconsin uh, flipping to a uh, so-called red state and we here in Wisconsin have enough um, experience with voter suppression and irregularities. So in this age of hacking, I see this as nothing more than just an audit uh, of our so-called election system here in Milwaukee or in, in Wisconsin. So everyone shouldn't get all bent out of shape and frazzled and freaked out about what, what does this all mean. It's simply going to be uh, that there's going to be an audit of uh, how our votes are counted and how they are miscounted. Um, so, I also want to make, 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 make it care, perfectly clear that uh, there's no way in support of uh, Hillary on my part, no way at all in support of Hillary Clinton. It's, it is a matter of just the fact that we deserve uh, elections that we can trust. And then lastly, you know, in this day and age where uh, uh, the so-called president-elect uh, Trump says everything is rigged, I would think that he want to be the first one to have the audit take place all across the country. So I welcome this, uh, I welcome this, and a uh, similar audit should be taking place uh, all across the country to ensure a better democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. This has been a rush for us, a real rush. We got to go on Wednesday, and all the time we are working with the with, 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 with the specialists, the, the recall lawyers, the forensics experts, the computer experts. There is so much that we could talk about, but at the same time, I only want to talk about what we know. Okay? 
We know that there were discrepancies in comparison to the votes that Hillary got versus Obama in certain wards. We know there's discrepancies uh, between the hard count vote and, 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 the, and the variances in, in the uh, paperless machine areas where, where Trump uh, you know, won way beyond what was expected. So understanding these things, we've, we've, we've begun this process. Um, the affidavit will be filed today uh, in Madison. Uh, at that point in time, we'll have a lot more understanding in terms of the detail of the recount itself. I, I do know that 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 we're we're, we're going to be having a uh, oh, reconciliation of paper records. It's called. That's a step further than a regular audit. You know whether or not that involves. Uh, forensic audit of machines, we'll know that better when we see the actual affidavit from the attorneys. And that will be filed today, and, and, and we will share that as, as quickly as we can. Um, I think with all the stuff that's out there, one of the things that we do know is this, and, and I'm not a statistician, but I generally understand it, and, and I, I ask your patience. Here we have, have Trump's official vote share at 47.9. And it's contradicted by the exit polls. The exit polls indicated that he should have had 44.3%. And so there's a whole lot to deal with in terms of polls, but we do know this. Exit polls are not like pre-election polls. They're not interviewing you know, potential voters in terms of what they might do. They are being interviewed 10 feet away as they leave that polling place and ask, who did you vote for directly? And the company that, that, that does that has been doing that. Edison National Elections, the Edison Company, has been doing it forever. So, you know, we, we, we can question the methodology, but one thing is very clear to us. This is how the system has been judged in the past. And so as we look, at this graphic here. This is the exit poll. And in this purple area are the responses of people. And this is done at a 95% confidence level. And normally you would expect a 2% variation between that and the actual vote, which was reported at 47.9. But we do know that the statistical variation, and this is the most important thing, that that slim of variation could be expected to occur only once in 850 presidential elections. That's what raises the question, we need to take a look at this, and a good look at this, okay? Uh, the, the other situation is in terms of Feingold. Again, we're calling, in, in terms of calling for a recount, only a candidate can call for a recount. Therefore, Dr. Jill Stein has called for that recount. Uh, but here's the information on Feingold. You know, his vote share uh, for the official vote was uh, 46.8. It's contradicted by the exit poll that said he had 50.7%. 50 .50, 50 of the vote. So when, when, when you matriculate that out, so looking at this occurrence and the difference, this would be expected to happen in once in 1,800 U.S. Senate elections, which says something sounds a little fishy. We don't know what it is, but we owe, we owe the American public the right to take a good look at it. Therefore, as the Green Party, we are we are making this step. We'll have the, 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 the affidavit will be, be, be filed later on today. We'll have greater detail in terms of the composition, what's in there. But I know once that affidavit is filed, the Wisconsin Election Commission will we meet to tabulate the cost of it. It's been estimated at 1.1 million here in Wisconsin. We are prepared to deliver certified checks anytime they ask for it to cover that. In Michigan, I think, which is the next state, and I think Pennsylvania is the next state. It costs $600,000.
in Michigan, the following state, and in uh, Pennsylvania, I believe, is on Monday. It has to be filed. Michigan on Wednesday. That's five hundred thousand dollars. So Wisconsin's cost is equal to the total of the states of Michigan and Pennsylvania. But the American public has come out strongly around this, saying it has to be done. You know, on a nonpartisan basis, the money has come in. Our commitment as the Green Party is that if we didn't get on the ballot, let's say in Michigan, and there was money raised, that that money will go to campaign schools next year to groom local candidates. The last time we did that in Wisconsin, I think, was about 2002, 2003. The next year, we had 37 elected officials in the state of Wisconsin. As a national party, our commitment is not only to run, to, 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 to run at the national level, but more importantly, to build at the local level and build political careers. And so that's where these dollars and excess dollars will go in the future for next year. You know, this, this differentiation here, one of the things that's really important we know that our U.S. government monitors elections all around the world. And by their standards, looking at this kind of math, our election in the U.S. would have been called a failed and unfair and illicit election. Our U.S. government would judge that if this happened in another country. And that's all the more reason why we're standing up and going forward with this. So, you know, I, I know there, are, there, there, are, there are questions about process and time. I can't say when exactly that will be delivered uh, to the Election Commission today. Uh, and, and also there were other questions in terms of availabilities. You know, Jill has been, 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 been on the BBC. She's been on, on, um, on, 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 on national public television. She's been on all the networks. And I'll tell you, that's a hundred times more exposure than she got during the 18 months of campaigning. You know, and, and, and you know, if you don't know about us, there's a reason for that. And I'm glad to see the corporate media here, but, but we don't get our share of time there, you know. And we don't get into the debates that are controlled by the Democratic and Republican parties. And so, you know, this is not a grandstand. I'm just letting you know who we are, what we stand for, and how we're moving forward to build a movement. It wasn't about this election. It's about building a movement with integrity for the American public. And so we're going to proceed in that fashion. Thank you. Yes. Well, it's just not about the outcome. It's about the process. You know, and we and we and we've heard from the last 18 months about irregularities in New York and around the country and disenfranchised voters and and, 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 and whether my vote got counted if I voted early. This is a process, a first step to examine whether or not our electoral system is working. You know, and we feel that that's very, very important. You know, as we talk about the, the forensics experts and the machines, it, it can go into a lot of ways. You know, you know, th they say that the machines in Wisconsin are not tamperable uh, or be, be, can, cannot be hacked from the outside, but they can be manipulated from the inside. And the state of California has outlawed the machines that we use in Wisconsin. I think that says something to us, you know, that we ought to take a look at this. Now, we've been talking about, I've been writing about the black box since 2000 in terms of what happens in those countings in the machines, and we've never really had a really good investigation about that. I don't know if that's included in this, but we'll have a better idea what I'm saying included. And it's a notion of a, a forensic audit of the machine itself. You know, we'll, we'll get totals coming out of the machines to recheck, but an actual audit, we'll see if that is part of what this is about later on when we get the 
affidavits from the attorneys that are going to be filed today. Mr. Mitchell, did I hear you correctly? Excess funds raised will be used towards candidate recruitment? Yes, not, not for candidate for candidate schools. You know, and, 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 and back in, I think it was 2002, uh, we did this with three states and had more than 100 participants down in Kenosha uh, for a candidate school. And a candidate school is very important because, and especially now, that we've got this generation, younger generation, that is so excited about changing things in America and so willing to do that. We've, we've had people, we've, we've had over a dozen people during the last couple of weeks say, sign me up for that school. And so we look forward to doing that. And again, even before this, the commitment with the, of the campaign was to help fund schools around the country. The other thing is, you, you, you said there's no smoking gun, yet you point to what may be one of the weakest links, exit polls, in terms, in terms of your argument, it's a very weak link. Exit polls constantly change through the night, so why are you pointing to exit polls? Well, we're pointing to exit polls because the exit poll specialist said we should point to it. You know, the lawyers nationally, this is not us locally. Well, what, 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 I'm, what can I answer your question, sir? Okay. What we're saying here, you know, is this is so relevant that it needs to be followed through on. Yes, I said there's no smoking gun. We may not know that until we get this recount going and get into the process. And that's what we're saying we want to do. And that's what we're saying we are going to do. Would you speak to any Democratic donors, let's say, who say we're giving our money because we want, to we want a better understanding of the process, but they're not comfortable with their money going toward moving Green Party now? Well, well, the, well that's, that's their decision. We have already collected enough money to do these filings. We've collected over $4 million since Wednesday. That'll cover our filings in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. So I'm, I'm not saying do not donate to the Green Party. I'm saying it's, it's a matter of your own judgment. But, I'm, but what I'm saying is this is our commitment and was our commitment prior to this issue of recall. Is Ms. Stein in Madison today? No, no, Jill, Jill is, on, is, is traveling right now from Maine to Boston. You mentioned the reconciliation of papers. Can you just um, talk a bit about that? Well, you know, I, I, I was on a national conference call this morning. And I was told that this reconciliation of paper records is a step further than a normal recount. The details of it are all, all in the affidavit and the language and the negotiation between the lawyers and the Wisconsin Election Commission. We don't have access to that. We'll have access to that later on. And I know that the papers in the file have a basis. What do you know officially what you're saying the papers with the basis is? Is it this, um, these well, I haven't seen the papers yet, but 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 the lawyers and uh, the team that that's, that's put put putting this together uh, forwarded this, and we had a conference call with them in terms of understanding this just the other night. And this is a lot of the basis in terms of where that particular end is going toward. Do you think the Green Party website had a for volunteers to monitor yes. Where are you at? Are you going to have enough people? Yeah, well, this, this is a very quick rush. Like I said, the, um, the, um, the commission decides, and, and that may be Wednesday, uh, we deliver the money. The recount may start on Monday or Tuesday. Therefore, we are going to be tra doing, doing trainings probably Sunday night and Monday throughout the state. We have a section at Dr. Jill Stein's website where you can register as a volunteer. And then that'll come back here. I myself am coordinating the election observers for the 4th Congressional District. And then, then, then availability and assignments and training and will proceed very quickly. What else besides these exit polls will this be based on? When there, this was a very contentious election, a lot of people say it maybe was one in 850 as far as people even being willing to tell who they voted for. Is there anything else that this is based on? Well, that'll be in the affidavit. But what I'm saying primarily is this is what the national campaign and the lawyers provided us with and wanted us to share with you today. Out of Gandhi, out of Gandhi, out of Gandhi. 
What? Well, there, 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 there's all kinds of instances around the country and in Wisconsin, you know, and, and again, this is not about the Greens. I could say that we had Greens who voted and, and their ward indicated there were no votes for Jill Stein, but that's not the basis of what we're doing. Again, this is about, about integrity and voting and it needs to be done. Do you have any hope that it could change potential results? The results? Uh, I have no position in terms of favoring one candidate over the other. We were in fourth place. This is not going to affect us as much. What we're concerned about, again, is the integrity of the election. Those who compiled these graphs and this data, can you say that they've been in touch with some of the computer scientists, some of those who reported in the, the New Yorker magazine article, who first kind of raised these red flags, have those individuals been in direct contact with the three party lawyers? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We, we, we have our own team dating back to 2004 when we did this in Ohio, you know, who, who've worked together. And, and, and this is a researcher who worked with us in terms of the efforts in Ohio. And he's an attorney. The state Republican Party's executive director said Jill Stein's decision to pursue a recount is absurd and nothing more than the expense of political stunt undermining the Wisconsin election process. You know, I think that's to be expected. Uh, literally, literally. Um, my, our concern isn't about that. It, it's about the voting public. You talked about the machines being able to be, you know, rigged from sort of the inside. Who do you think might have done that? I, 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 I don't have an answer for that. I don't know that that actually happened. But by doing this, we're going to see whether or not it did happen. Thank you. We'll share information as we get it. Thanks for coming.